Okay, hey everybody, welcome to a very special episode of On The Rest From Off The Cuff, where I'll be comparing these two kind of brand titans, Seiko versus Citizen, um, in terms of dive watch per dive watch. And uh, both of these watches pay homage to earlier models uh, from kind of the very beginnings of these brands' forays into the dive watch space and category. Um, and they were both kind of released near one another uh, with the Seiko uh, being a bit older and the Citizen being a bit newer. And there are some big differences here. Uh, you're gonna get, of course, a titanium case and bracelet construction with the Citizen. Also, you're gonna be getting a high beat movement and by comparison i mean it's not traditional high beat not beating at 10 seconds right or or, or uh, five hertz but it's a four hertz movement versus the three hertz movement you're going to be getting in the seiko so slightly slower from that perspective um, and then also the citizen comes in cheaper at an msrp and probably even at a kind of street price uh where as uh, you know, the Seiko list price is around 1200 and you can get them for around eight. Uh, the Citizen's uh, pre list price is 995 and you can get them for uh, typically for under $800. So uh, there's a lot, there's kind of a level playing field, uh, but there are some big differences here in terms of the level of effort and execution that both of these brands put in. But I think these are positioned to really be competitive. I, I mean, on paper, it looks like there would be very competitive, uh, although there would be some trade-offs. Um, I feel like most people would see these as pretty equally matched. I will say, after handling them both, I don't believe they're very equally matched and I will go ahead and uh, share those thoughts with you guys as we kind of examine each watch. So with that said, let's go ahead, zoom the camera out, get these pieces in hand and take a closer look. Okay guys, so we uh, already kind of discussed some of the objective differences here, all right? Uh, steel versus... Um, Titanium, they both do have a hard coating. I will say that in, uh, you know, from my experience, typically the hard coating on the Citizen is even going to be harder. Um, and of course the beat rate on the movement is beating faster, uh, although it doesn't have quite the level of power reserve. Um, you know, I think uh, there's a lot of objective things that do make the Citizen uh, have better specs. So on paper, I would say the Citizen is offering something stronger. Uh, I will say though, in execution is where the Seiko watch just kind of runs away with it. Uh, this Citizen in terms of its level of execution is closer to something like maybe my Mini Turtle, um, which is a $500 Seiko watch uh, versus this uh, watch being, you know, a thousand dollar Seiko watch. And it feels like it probably could cost more. Whereas this watch, I think if you buy it for what it is, which is a great functional tool, you will be very, very happy with it. But if you are buying it to kind of be the crown Japanese jewel of your diving collection, um, you'll just find that there's just a lot of things uh, that make it, uh, you know, soft by comparison. I think soft is the best way to put it. And uh, let's just show some, some basic differences here, guys. Um, the bezel, look at how sharp the execution is for the grip on the bezel. Look at how soft the execution is for the grip on the bezel. Look at how sharp the bevels are on the case of the Seiko in terms of the contouring, the that bevel, that undercut, very nice sharp transitions. Now look at the case of the Citizen, very, very soft. There's even another angle here that almost disappears that you wouldn't know it's there it's just very soft and rounded and just not tight <laughs> not defined right uh so this is like 720p and then this is like 4k uh in terms of the sharpness right even when we get down to the bracelet uh the bracelet here it they, they both have a three link appearance right but the this here the center is a different piece of metal. So what it is, although it's not actually three links, it's two links, this is actually the same piece of metal as this with another cap over that. So it makes the three links 
look like three links because there's an actual break within the metal whereas here it's just formed it's just has a stamp and underneath you can see it's just a single link that's a y shape uh and then you know they even do go through the trouble of of adding a bit of contour underneath but you can see here that it's just one piece uh, at the end of the day right and, and it's very noticeable one piece even if we get to the end link right very noticeable one piece and uh whereas again seiko kind of went the extra mile okay it st stands out it does have that contour there but if you look underneath it is actually a separate piece of metal that's laid on top so there's this metal and then there's another piece that goes on top so again it creates that actual definition right so hey those are some things you can't really argue with right looking at the crowns you know a lot of people complained about this crown being too small oh, it wasn't even i didn't even screw that one down from when i said it so we'll screw that crown down check that out some people said it's too small right it's not that much smaller than the seiko crown but it's signed right oh well it's a signed crown and it is really nicely executed i will say that the crown execution on the signed crown and this piece just seems way more detailed compared to the rest of the watch right like if you compare this grip in terms of the tactile engagement and the the sharpness versus how soft this is i mean this is softer than an invicta pro diver in terms of the the level of uh you know contouring and just how finely it's done and then the action you probably can't even really hear it on camera too much it's a 60 click bezel you know and it, it, it's serviceable but it is quite mushy and hollow by comparison again serviceable it does the job i wouldn't say it's the worst on the, like if you're just like hey i have to have good bezel action or decent bezel action i can't buy this because it's so sloppy i would still give this a chance i would say you know get into an ad and, and give it a, a whirl because you you'd be surprised i don't think it's that bad but again eh, comparison is the killer of joy when you compare it to something like this just feels so solid so stout overbuilt oh 120 clicks right so there's going to be less room for play already and then everything is solid steel right even the bezel insert itself is steel uh that has been engraved and uh and and of course satinized there um, and then when you touch it because it's satin you don't really see a lot of fingerprints this one because it is like it just from touching that it's just a smooth piece of old aluminum which is old school don't get me wrong like this anodized aluminum style uh you know it's just look at the fingerprint on it it's just you get on it just feels quite cheap by comparison there's nothing that's engraved it's just printed on there even the loom pip itself uh looks more like a piece of loom that is put into a ball and put into there versus here you're having the loom shielded by a piece of crystal so that will never discolor versus this one you know over time since it doesn't appear to have a crystal over it I would say that this may discolor over time. I think it's still better executed than um, some you will find uh, kind of exposed loom type of applications. But by comparison, you know, this is just miles ahead, even looking at the dial, right? So the dial here, some of you might be looking at it and saying, oh, those are applied indices. No, they're not. They're actually punched through the back. Um, they're raised indices. Uh, this is just part of the dial so that uh, you can't break the indices off. No matter how hard, whatever shocks, these indices won't fall off because they're part of the dial. It's one piece. Now, but look at the definition, though, between those indices and the dial. 
it's easy to be confused thinking that these are applied on top because there's such a sharp transition over, right? You don't see that. You get here and now look at the way that these indices are punched through the dial here and give it a quick little wipe on this crystal. Okay. Look at the edges on the dial where it meets the indice. You can see the indentation in the dial still. And again, I don't hate this on its own in a vacuum, but to compare it here, it's just noticeably, again, less effort to do something like this in terms of what they wanted to do. Um, and some of you are probably screaming, but what about the clasp? What about the clasp? Okay, I love this citizen clasp. I've, I have a couple of citizen divers, uh, one that is more expensive and high end than this, automatic, and it is done to a higher level, and I like that one better in terms. And then I have another one that's much cheaper than this at around under $400 that is very much to a similar uh, style as this, um, but its proportions aren't quite as nice. Like, I still think this is a, a nicer watch, but that one's like closer to $300 than $400. Um, it does have, you know, the, the 8,000 series movement in it, but it does have hacking and hand winding, um, but it does have the same type of clasp. And it's not bad. Again, for a diver's extension, this is great. But if those of you who are saying that, if you think that this is a, is, is, is offering you toolless micro adjust, guys, you're not going to want to use this as a micro adjust. I mean, you're going to go like this and set your watch. Right, like if this has half links, use that to dial it in. Don't be out there extending this already large diver's clasp, right? It's nicely sized and proportioned to the lug to lug of the watch itself. But even if you go out one click, guys, that's just, that's not a micro adjust. Like that is okay, hey, worst case scenario, uh, you know, your well, your wrist swells or something. And yeah, go ahead, do that. But if you need to do this to get this to fit you, I don't really see that as a good, uh, you know, solution from the brand. I, I just don't see that from an ergonomic or aesthetic standpoint. Again, functionally as a ratcheting diver's extension, this is the better diver's extension for a diver's watch. I'll give them that. But this don't, trick yourself into thinking this is their toolless micro adjust. It's not. Citizen does a toolless micro adjust. I have it on another Citizen watch. Uh, it doesn't ratchet out like that. It is built into the clasp and can come out and, you know, it, it, it doesn't elongate the clasp to do that. It elongates the bracelet. So that is, uh, you know, again, it's very similar in terms of the construction, milled folding section, stamped, clasp with a push button stamped clasp push button right milled folding section except here it's going to be you know a lot of people hate this uh, uh in terms of being the diver's extension very unsightly right that their diver's extension is better for sure but in terms of actual fitment and micro adjust you being able to have these four manual micro adjust holes will get you a better fit also Again, getting into the execution, let me just give it a quick wipe. Look at this dive buckle. Look at the chamfer. Right? The level of execution on the brushing on the chamfer versus this. <laughs> it's just all matted out. Also, yes, the I believe the scratch resistance is, is stronger than what you'll find on the Dia Shield. But look how cloudy. The material looks by comparison. You can see the brushing still on the Seiko. It becomes very cloudy, and that might just be because it's on titanium. But again, we're comparing these two dive watches in terms of, I know that 
Citizen can do better than this. That's the frustrating part, is I've seen Citizen execute much higher levels than what they presented with this watch. I think it has a great aesthetic, a great design. I think even the proportions are quite nice. But again, it's just the just the level of effort that they did, or I should say the lack of effort uh, that that is just very disappointing to me, just because of how cool this watch could be. It's so, again, it's what makes this watch so great. It's because this is just an, a really wonderful dive watch. It doesn't have to be an iconic Seiko dive watch. This can just fit the bill for an outstanding dive watch for a lot of people. And this had that same potential because of the design, because of the proportions, uh, just from a looks perspective, right? Uh, this looks great and should look great on, on a lot of wrists and will wear well on a lot of wrists. And as a functional tool watch, dive watch this absolutely does the job it does the job it, it's great but to try to compare it just because they have similar indices or you know a similar you know time frame in which that they're recapturing that aesthetic for me it's just they're not comparable uh this the seiko is the better watch the finer executed it's everything that they've done is just it's a better timepiece it's a better piece of metal uh you know yes the movement here has a higher uh you know higher beat rate but are you guys looking at this can are you really telling the difference because a lot of you don't even notice that uh swatch <laughs> group watches are beating at a lower beat rate and even omega watches are beating at a lower beat rate they're not even beating at four hertz right so you're getting three hertz Hey, but you're getting a 70 hour power reserve, right? You're getting four Hertz here, but the power reserve is 42 hours. Uh, so I'd say again, there are things objectively, hey, you could say that this has a better movement. I'm fine with that. You could also say that it's using a better material. You could say that titanium is better than stainless steel. That's fair enough. Okay, like again, that's fair enough. You could say that it has a better Divers extension. That's fair. Everything else, if you compare it, this is better. It's just the bezel action is better. The grip, the ergonomic, like, it's just a bit. This is just the better watch. And there's a reason why this watch has been compared probably more than any other watch on my channel. It's just because it's just one of those watches that hits all of those things on the checklist, right? Here, you're getting those bullet points. Uh, and on paper, again, that's why I say I do not buy a spec sheet when people are like, why don't you buy the king turtle instead of the regular turtle? Um, you know, I recently featured the, the regular, uh, you know, Seiko turtle reissue. Um, and I said uh, simply, I don't buy the spec sheet. So just because something has ceramic doesn't make it a better watch for me. Just because something uses sapphire doesn't necessarily make it a better watch for me. Just because something uses titanium doesn't necessarily make it a better watch for me. Just because something has a higher beat movement doesn't necessarily make it a better watch for me. Because, you know, at the end of the day, this is what you're comparing is which one you're gonna wanna wear more, which one is a nicer watch. Right. And yeah, this is something. No, it's not luxury. It's not a black bay. It's not, uh, you know, uh, of course, Rolex comes to mind. Omega, even uh, Gloss Suit Original, right, uh, has a similar skin diver aesthetic. And I've been talking way too long. I'm sure you guys are already killing me in the uh, in the comments some of you are like down with seiko you know but hey C citizen did not take seiko down by any means in this comparison um again this watch has so much potential kind of makes it a letdown um just because of the design is so good uh just the fact that they executed it at such a level that just feels soft uh it's just it just cheapens the watch for me. Um, and again, it's a nice watch. It's not meant to be super expensive anyway, right? So some of you are like, that does none of that matters. I like this. That's fine. You can like this watch better. But in terms, like, just don't say that this is a better watch that's like giving, you know, handing it to Seiko or, you know, the Seiko killer. This one's retiring Seiko. Seiko so cocky, blah, blah, blah. Dude, what watch is better than this at this price point? find one 
it's just it's tough the other watches that compare well to what are other seikos so it's you know this is still for me sets the bar in terms of the complete package of that japanese dive watch at around a thousand bucks yes the msrp is higher but realistically these are all selling for well under a thousand bucks closer to 800 um so when you buy something like this you're getting a full you know you're getting the full package you buy something like this you are getting a lot of good specs but honestly uh you know somebody with like an orient mako with a cost under 200 dollars is going to have a similar build construction uh comparatively so that's unfortunate that this watch that you know that you would think it's a higher end target because of the msrp being at 995 you know that it, it had higher aspirations um but i think basically what they took is their basic kind of three to five hundred dollar citizen diver model um and then amped up the movement and amped up the material and uh kind of executed everything else uh, out of the same uh, you know out of the same assembly line that you would get so it just doesn't necessarily feel uh, Like they did enough whereas here this compared to a Seiko SKX or a mini turtle There are just so many differences so many things that make it feel better um, In so many different ways. It's just you feel like you're getting that value So with that said, let me know what you guys think in the comments below if you like the video Please would like if you haven't already please subscribe for more content just like this. Thanks guys